This small piece of uranium, about the size of a grape, can produce enough energy to power an entire neighborhood for a year. But how can something so compact generate such immense power? To answer this, we need to explore the complex process that turns uranium into a source of energy. From its discovery to the methods used to enhance its potential, we'll dive into how uranium is transformed into a powerful force for nuclear energy. This journey will reveal the science and technology behind how a small amount of uranium fuels homes, industries, and more across the globe. The Discovery of Uranium and Its Role in Nuclear Energy Uranium, a heavy metal found naturally in the Earth's crust, has a fascinating history that stretches back to the late 19th century. The journey of uranium's transformation into a powerful energy source began in 1896 when French physicist Henri Becquerel discovered radioactivity. He observed that uranium emitted rays without any external energy, leading to the realization that uranium could potentially release energy in a way that had never been seen before. This discovery sparked the interest of other scientists, including Marie and Pierre Curie, who later isolated radioactive elements like radium and polonium. In the following decades, the understanding of uranium deepened. In 1932, James Chadwick's discovery of the neutron laid the groundwork for understanding nuclear fission. Six years later, scientists Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, along with contributions from Lisa Meitner and Otto Frisch, demonstrated that uranium atoms could split when bombarded with neutrons. This process, known as nuclear fission, released an enormous amount of energy. It became clear that uranium with its potential for splitting atoms, was key to unlocking a new era of energy production. This marked the birth of nuclear energy, a discovery that would go on to change the world. The process of uranium enrichment. Uranium, in its natural state, isn't ideal for nuclear fission due to its composition. It consists mainly of uranium-238, which accounts for about 99.3% of the total and only a small fraction, around 0.7%, is uranium-235, the isotope needed for fission. This presents a challenge. To harness uranium's power for energy generation, the proportion of uranium-235 must be increased. This process is known as enrichment. Enrichment began to take shape during the Manhattan Project in World War II where scientists developed methods to separate uranium-235 from uranium-238. Two primary techniques were used, gaseous diffusion and electromagnetic separation. Both methods, though effective, were slow and energy-intensive. Gaseous diffusion relied on porous membranes to separate uranium hexafluoride gas into its isotopes, while electromagnetic separation used magnetic fields to divert the isotopes based on their masses. The real breakthrough came in the 1950s with the advent of gas centrifuges. These high-speed machines spin uranium hexafluoride gas at incredible speeds, using centrifugal force to separate the lighter uranium-235 from the heavier uranium-238. This method proved to be far more efficient and compact, revolutionizing the enrichment process and making nuclear energy more viable on a large scale. The journey from uranium ore to nuclear fuel. The process of turning uranium into usable nuclear fuel begins deep within the Earth, where uranium is mined from deposits in regions such as Australia, Kazakhstan, and Canada, which together account for 70% of the world's supply. Uranium is typically found in minerals like uraninite, or pitch blend, often in low concentrations. The extraction process starts with mining, which can either be done through open pit methods, where massive excavators remove layers of earth, or underground mining, where tunnels are dug to reach deeper deposits. In some cases, a technique called in situ leaching is used, where chemical solutions are injected into the ground 
to dissolve uranium from the ore, which is then pumped to the surface. Once extracted, the uranium ore is transported to processing plants, where it is crushed into a fine powder to make it easier to separate the uranium from other minerals. This powdered uranium is mixed with acids or alkaline solutions in large steel tanks, a process that separates the uranium from impurities. The result is a yellowish powder known as yellow cake, which contains about 80% pure uranium. While it's relatively low in radioactivity, yellow cake still requires careful handling due to its hazardous nature. This yellow cake is then sent for further refinement to make uranium hexafluoride, a compound essential for the next stage of enrichment. Now, first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Conversion and the creation of uranium hexafluoride. Once uranium is extracted and processed into yellow cake, it is ready for the next step in its transformation into nuclear fuel, conversion. The goal of this process is to turn the yellow cake into uranium hexafluoride, UF6, a compound that is essential for enrichment. The conversion process starts by purifying the yellow cake to remove impurities such as sulfur, magnesium, or traces of other metals that could interfere with later stages. To achieve this, the yellow cake is mixed with hydrofluoric acid in high temperature reactors. The resulting chemical reaction produces uranium hexafluoride gas. Uranium hexafluoride is a volatile compound, which makes it ideal for enrichment since it can easily be turned into gas at relatively low temperatures, around 56 degrees. The gas is then cooled and stored in cylindrical steel containers, which are designed to handle the highly corrosive nature of UF6. Safety is paramount in conversion plants, as uranium hexafluoride reacts violently with water, forming toxic compounds. To prevent accidents, these plants are equipped with advanced filtration systems, ventilation, and sensors to detect any leaks. The conversion of uranium into uranium hexafluoride is crucial because it enables the next step, the enrichment process, where the uranium-235 isotope is concentrated to make it suitable for use in nuclear reactors or weapons. The enrichment process, separating uranium isotopes, the enrichment of uranium is a critical step that makes uranium-235, the isotope needed for nuclear fission, more concentrated. Natural uranium consists of about 99.3% uranium-238, which is not easily usable for fission, and only 0.7% uranium-235. To make uranium suitable for nuclear reactors or weapons, the proportion of uranium-235 must be increased through the process of enrichment. In the past, techniques like gaseous diffusion and electromagnetic separation were used to separate uranium isotopes, but these methods were slow and energy intensive. The real breakthrough came in the 1950s with the development of gas centrifuges. These machines spin uranium hexafluoride gas at incredibly high speeds, more than 50,000 revolutions per minute. The centrifugal force generated by the spinning separates the lighter uranium-235 from the heavier uranium-238. Cascades of these centrifuges are used, with each machine gradually increasing the concentration of uranium-235. This method is far more efficient than older techniques, requiring less energy and space. Once enriched, uranium-235 is ready for use in nuclear reactors where its fission generates energy, from enriched uranium to fuel rods. After uranium has been enriched to the desired level, typically 3 to 5% uranium-235 for commercial reactors, it undergoes a critical transformation into usable nuclear fuel. The enriched uranium is first converted back into uranium oxide, a stable solid, through a chemical process. This uranium oxide is then formed into small, round pellets, each roughly the size of a coin and weighing about 7 grams. 
These pellets are incredibly energy dense, capable of producing as much energy as several tons of coal. Next, the uranium pellets are baked in high temperature furnaces at around 1,400 degrees to make them dense and stable enough to withstand the extreme heat and radiation inside a reactor. Once baked, the pellets are placed into long, thin tubes made from zirconium alloy, a material that resists corrosion and allows neutrons to pass without absorbing them. The individual rods, each holding multiple pellets, are then sealed and assembled into fuel assemblies. These assemblies, weighing around 500 kilos each, are ready to be inserted into the reactor core, where they will fuel the nuclear fission process. Fuel Rods in the Reactor Core Once the uranium fuel rods are assembled into fuel assemblies, they are transported to the reactor core, where nuclear fission takes place. A typical reactor core consists of hundreds of these fuel assemblies, carefully arranged to maximize efficiency. Each assembly contains several long rods, each filled with uranium pellets, ready to undergo fission. In the reactor, the uranium-235 atoms in the fuel rods are bombarded by neutrons, causing them to split and release a tremendous amount of heat and more neutrons, which continue the chain reaction. To maintain control over this powerful process, control rods made of materials like boron or cadmium are inserted into the core. These rods absorb excess neutrons, slowing or halting the chain reaction when necessary. The heat generated by fission is used to boil water, creating steam that drives turbines connected to a generator, ultimately producing electricity. This controlled fission process allows nuclear reactors to generate vast amounts of energy with minimal carbon emissions, making nuclear power a vital component of the world's energy mix. And that's how enriched uranium is transformed from a simple element into a powerful source of energy. From its discovery to the complex processes of enrichment and conversion, uranium has become a cornerstone of modern energy production. Despite its potential dangers, when handled with care and precision, it provides a nearly limitless source of clean power. Nuclear energy continues to play a crucial role in reducing carbon emissions and addressing the world's growing energy needs. If you found this journey through the world of uranium fascinating, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more insightful content. See you next time.